Hi guys and welcome to this new video. Today we're gonna do a double revival of some sort. So we're gonna check out a photo mode, but not a new one. We're gonna dive back in 2017, seven years ago. Let me give you a bit of context for this. I received a, a challenge on Twitter by Fuget Sudo. Thank you, man, for mentioning me in your tweet. So he said, I challenge Shinobi Space to do a retro review of probably one of the best photo modes ever created, in my personal opinion, by Monolith. Um, way back in 2017, Virtual Orthography, Shadow War, Lord of the Ring, Bring On Wonder Woman. So let me explain a bit. <clears throat> uh, Monolith studio did uh, shadow of mordor and shadow of war games that i i actually loved shadow of mordor i played it back in the days and i didn't know about photo modes and stuff like this uh, at that time they did add a photo mode later on shadow of mordor i still own the game uh, but for this challenge review of some sort i installed the demo of shadow of war so it, I think the photo modes are the same in both games. I'm not sure 100%. So we're going to use this one from the demo because it's the most recent one. The studio is now preparing Wonder Woman game and I hope they will have a photo mode in there. And if they do, I don't know about the history of the studio. So I don't know if the, it's the same crew doing uh, both games. But if, uh, if they do add a photo mode and they just want to have a better version of what they did before or, you know, um, enhance a bit of this, well, guys, I'm here for that. So we're going to revive this photo mode and we're going to revive one of my format that was called everything wrong with this photo mode. Uh, but except that today might be everything great with this photo mode because actually... Fuget Sudo is right. It's a great photo mode. It's um, it has some little little problems here and there. Um, if you don't know me, guys, my name is Shinobi. I'm a virtual photographer. I take photography in video games, and I'm also a photo mode consultant, uh, which means that I worked with studios AAA or indie to make their photo modes better. So you know, I just give them ideas and feedbacks. I test their build. I advice to change this and then uh, how to make it a better use for virtual photographers and stuff like this so today is a free consultation for monolith uh, if i'm gonna try to send them their this video hopefully it will help them we're gonna check shadow of war photo mode we're gonna see everything that is great and should be kept because my fear is now if they if they are new people in the studio and they want to make a new photo mode and they just go for what's done nowadays they watch this and they watch big games with bad photo modes and they they want to go with this type of photo mode it's a huge mistake they have gold in their hand and i think they should take their own photo mode as a model but there are some stuff to change to make it a bit more modern and um, user friendly so it it will be a bit longer than just a photo mode overview because i want to go in depth explanation on some stuff so you know definitely not a video for everyone um but i think it, it will be interesting to dive in so let's go all right so first of all we're gonna do the usual we're gonna see how to open the photo mode first thing you need to do is to go in settings and find this photo mode option and uh, activate it to have the the shortcut so um, let's talk about this shortcut right now because it's very interesting the shortcut on controller is l3 so the left stick plus triangle so we've seen before what i think about combination of buttons for photo mode shortcut it's not ideal if you have the possibility to use one shortcut but not all games can do this uh, it would be better to have just one button now another option possible is to take this button and to make it hold 
to open the photo mode. So we did this on Mortal Shell, for instance. Um, it was the option button uh, that you hold just briefly to open the photo mode instead of just the menu. I was not happy with this uh, solution. I strongly advocated for just press the two sticks maybe that that might be the less worse solution for combination of uh, buttons in my opinion but they kept their id and you know after a while you you get used to it and even for action shot you can anticipate a bit for opening the the photo mode but still i don't think it's ideal if you can have just one button it's better now this one of course on keyboard you can press just p key and you will open the photo mode that so that's no problem here but that's for controller thing this one is a, a weird combination and it doesn't really work well so the first thing i would definitely advise them to change is this let me explain a bit all right so the the game looks really weird now that i'm recording this video it, it looks super low res but when you open the photo mode it actually <laughs> fix it so who cares okay well now if you want to open this photo mode uh it says press l3 and triangle right so if you press l3 right now and then you press triangle nothing happens if you press both exactly at the same time nothing happened so it's super confusing and it took me a lot of time to actually make be able to open the photo mode <laughs> first time so you need to have a reason uh like there is a, a small delay and you have to change the both uh press very quickly so it goes like this tac tac if you if you get this rhythm right you can open the photo mode so that's bad that's bad that's not really intuitive and it it will not be super easy for you to take a, a shot to open the photo mode while you are having a fight or while if you want to just have a cool position of your character like let's say you want to g turn a bit like this and open it at the good animation it's not it's not easy let me try uh, i missed it see so yeah it's really not <sighs> nah. all right now it's it's okay i guess so yeah just the way you open the photo mode is a bit tricky and it can be enhanced so let's move to the the ui shall we <clears throat> so the overall ui is a bit oldy uh nowadays we have more smaller box in the right bottom corner uh, it takes less place on the on the on the screen so this could be a way to make it better um, but the first really big problem for me is the way the tabs are displayed so you have this uh, big box all right on the left part of the screen you have l1 r1 or whatever trigger uh, is to just move through the tabs and you have the name of the tab but you don't know how many tabs you have and how far you are in the in in them usually nowadays you have uh, little icons for each tab right and it's very convenient actually to just know where you are on the on the, the amount of tab you have in this case you don't know how many tabs you have and i can tell you it's 12 so it's a lot of tabs and it's really not easy to remember the order of each tab right so once you're in your your picture process you take stuff and you don't know where are the settings anymore you you want to come back to camera you don't know the shorter way to go back there you know you, you don't know if you have to roll to r1 or l1 so 12 tabs is a lot so yeah definitely i would advise to have icons for each tab and maybe some some merging ones you can you can have two different tabs on one uh, for to reduce a bit the amount of tabs you have you can see here for instance that on the logo tab you have just one setting uh, 
um, so you have a lot of space you could you could add different related uh, settings you know like the frame ones or things like this you don't have to have this on different separated tabs and if you do anyways it would be better to have the the, the icons of each tab so let's stick on your ui for now you have also down there the prompt of uh, the control so you have camera fly palm dolly and uh, pedestal which is the crane thing set anchor reset and toggle ui and exit so first of all the set anchor one is the the l3 button it's quite interesting so you can see that you have camera free fly uh, selected here and free fly means that you have uh, a free cam which is absolutely perfect and you want this we will talk about the camera range in a minute guys uh stay with me so free fly is okay but now if you have a character in the center you can have this little l3 option up appearing and if you press this it will turn into an orbital cam so it's interesting because it actually uses one of the, the gameplay feature that when you locate an enemy, you can focus on it and uh, know information about them and stuff like this. But in this case, you can go and find another enemy in the, like close it like here. I have another one and you can focus on, on this guy now and have a you know an orbital cam and if you deselect it you will go back to free fly like what we call now free cam so yeah it's really cool to just move your camera away super fast or to find another point of view now is it really really useful i'm not sure i'm not sure that's the most important thing to have but yeah, we, we mostly use free camera anyways. But okay, that's an interesting thing to mention. Um, one thing that I want to mention about the UI stuff as well is, and it's very good, is that you can hide the UI and still move your settings. Uh, if you remember where they are, you, you also have the possibility to just navigate up and down through the settings without having them uh, shown so it's really cool and uh, you can see here that you have a grid option so if you activate it you will have this okay grid right it's a it's a rule of third grid and if you hide the ui the grid will stay up and it's really cool because you need this to to work on your composition especially because the ui is so huge uh it it would be really annoying to have it um so it's cool make the ui disappear keep the grid on is really needed now how do you improve this grid well you could have a selection of different grids, for instance. You, you could have five different grids, different composition rules grids. And also, if you want, to, even on, on the rule of third grid, I would always advise to have a dot that showcase the center of the picture, because it's sometimes a bit complicated to really center your shot, especially on vertical. So yeah, it doesn't really takes much uh, to have just a dot in the center or a grid that sh that marks the the center like uh, you know like diagonals lines and stuff like this so yeah you could definitely have a, a couple of more grids make it better we we're gonna start moving through the the tabs and we're gonna start with this camera one so you have three things in there you have the zoom the roll and the grid that we just seen so the zoom one is obviously the field of view what we call field of view more now and it's a really good one the span of it is really cool you can go super wide you can go super like super zoom in, zoomed in so it's really good i wouldn't change anything here you have also the roll which is the right name actually now we we call this tilt usually now but it's uh it's a bit of a mistake and again you can turn 179 degrees not 180 i don't know why and this is where the first problem i see <coughs> is showing the way you move your settings oh wow i just got a 90 
perfectly 90 degrees uh, roll set and believe me it's rare the reason why it's rare is that because every time you press your left or right d-pad thing to move your values in uh, like in zoom for instance it will not be super precise so for now i'm at 30.3 right and if i press once i will go to 29.1 if i press once back I'm now 30.9 and if I do again another press it's 30.0 so you can see that the the pressure on your button will change how far it goes but it's very sensitive so it's super hard to come back to uh, like the normal value for instance if you want to go back on this little marker which is good to have a marker that shows the the, the default value it's super hard to just go you know it's almost impossible so it's no big deal for the the zoom uh setting i guess but for the roll one the tilt if you want a perfect 90 degrees shot it will be super complicated to have unless you have a lot of luck like i just did so let's go back to position and even go back to perfectly horizontal one it's super complicated so Let's go back and let's try again to have a 90 degrees. So I'm 90.6. 87.8. Oh, okay, I got it. <laughs> I swear I did this this video a bit before and I had a problem, technical issue, so I have to redo it. I swear it took me like five minutes. Uh, last time to just get it right but anyways so you should make your your settings move one degree per one degree or one half a degree if you want more being more precise but yeah just this is a bit annoying to just have a kind of a sensitivity random sensitivity if you will uh, apart from this really no problem and because we are on the camera thing we're gonna uh, talk about the camera range because you know that nowadays we have super sm short camera range so let's see how it was seven years ago when people didn't really care about photo modes uh okay let's go from there so let me okay let me go back and back and back and back and back okay let me we cannot see the character anymore uh here let me go with the proper angle okay can i go back again yes i can back 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 so it's great it's absolutely great i think it's almost as good as this loop one Oh, we cannot see the guy anymore. It moves super slow right now. I think it's because my game is a bit like uh, having a problem here um, because I'm recording because it, it moves a bit faster normally. Still not fast enough. If you have that big range, which is huge and it's perfect, we need this. It's It's the minimum needed actually so please a monolith if you watch this next photo mode do the same it's we it's needed if you want to have that bigger range you need to be able to speed up the the camera movement uh, a good way to do this is just to allocate the normal gameplay run uh, button to the photo mode so in this game for instance i think the run button is x or a on uh, on a xbox controller so if you just apply this in your camera movement and then pressing x would speed up the camera movement it would be nice because it's intuitive because you do this so many times in the game and then you just do it naturally in the photo mode so that would be cool and also you should have another button to slow down and just make you know when you are really in in close-ups and things like this making easier to to take pictures so yeah speed up but the the camera range is absolutely amazing in this game and it's very very needed let let me showcase it just one more time uh, 
Having that much range will help you have so many different possibilities of compositions and you will notice different different elements while you are moving away from your character and you will want to take those shots and uh, you know these little enemies and things like this so it's really not just it's really important to have it's okay that's the maximum range that's really amazing we need this it's perfect thank you so much for doing this and please do it again in uh in your next game so zoomed in maximum it's it, it's like this zoomed out maximum is like this really cool really really cool now if you want to go back to your character you can't you you have to go back like you need to exit the photo mode and re-enter it's actually no big deal because the photo mode will keep your 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 settings we'll see this in a moment but if you had a, a perfect position of your character a movement position it, it's a bit annoying so having a reset button would be cool and let's talk about the reset options uh, by the way because you have one you can see the r3 button or right stick button is um is a reset thing but what does it reset really it resets um the the tab the whole tab so here the zoom for instance or the roll you can reset it easily okay now you it doesn't reset the camera distance and it doesn't reset each setting separately so if you want to reset only the zoom you can't you have to reset the roll as well so you know one really cool thing to have in any photo mode is a possibility of resetting one setting just the zoom for instance so let's say you press the reset button or you you press any button once and you reset the setting and one to reset the whole tab or the whole photo mode i prefer the whole tab actually um i mean it's it's debatable because it depends if you if you have that many tabs in your photo mode you you want to have something to reset everything at once because here in this photo mode you have to go through the every tab and uh, and press r3 so it goes like this when you want to reset everything uh r1 r3 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 and your all reset you see you want to just hold the, the reset button and reset everything. That's much better. If you can have the three possibilities, reset each setting, reset each tab and reset it all for, for the mod, it's the best, but it's complicated to have. So, you know, choose, choose one, but here it's a bit uh, annoying, but that's because the photo mode keeps uh, the, the settings in memory, which I love. Um, I think it's better to have this because it helps you work on different uh, sets with different with the same settings. Now we've seen recently in the last game uh, in Wukong, in Black Myth Wukong that I reviewed last um, last week, we've seen that they chose to to let the player choose between activate the, the the memory mode, if you will, or deactivate it, and that's that's smart. So I think it's a great idea to have the possibility to save the feet, the settings or not. All right, so let's move through the tabs now. I know, I know it's long guys, but you have the chapters if you want to go uh, to the one that interests you the most, but a lot of them are doing everything right. So it will be fast to just uh, go through them. And the major issue I have with this photo mode is the same on every tab. So again, it will be fast actually. So character tab, the second char the second tab is the character tab. So let's let's look at this. You have the look at camera, and <laughs> it works more or less uh, depending on the position. You can see here that it did the opposite. It, and yeah maybe that's because i'm on a mount right now i'm just on on a on a warg or something i don't remember how they called those uh so maybe it, it messes up a bit with the camera position 
um, but okay you have the look at camera if you keep it activated it will follow your camera placement more or less again <laughs> i think it's okay when you are not on the mount and if you deactivate it it will keep it in the position you you chose okay and if you want to reset you just press your r3 button you have the hide player so classic uh it does hide the mount as well it, so maybe you want to separate this hide allies so i don't have allies in the in the field of view right now but it, it does what it says hide enemies uh, it hides all the enemies. You you can see here this little spider, for instance. Is it a spider? Wait. It's not. It's it's a dead guy. Oh, interesting then. It also hides the dead guys. So, this as well, a, a good way to enhance this is to have a different selections of enemies. Uh, you know, hide them one by one. Because sometimes in a fight you want to hide the ones that are in the background, but you want to keep the one you're fighting with. I know, I know it might be a bit complicated when you have a game like this with so many enemies. Like the battles are epic in this game, so you, you are sometimes surrounded by 10 or 15 enemies. So I guess it's complicated to just have hide one, two, three. But you know, the, 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 the ideal would be this and hide beasts so it doesn't hide the the beast you're on i think it hides others let me see yeah so you see you can have you, you have two others down there and they are not a mount so they count as beast all right so that's really cool to have all right and i want to come back a bit up there on the first setting emote so you can see that emote you have one out of 31 emotes and that's the first real issues we we will we will uh, have in this photo mode it's too much it's too much so it's a good thing it's a good bad thing but yeah 31 emotes is a lot so i'm not gonna showcase all of them i mean i will while i'm talking but really fast S there the, okay, okay that, that was fast there are they are cool by the way um, i'm not a big fan of emotes facial emotes but they are well made for an old game like this um now 31 that's a lot i i would definitely advise to to make it down to 15 or maybe 20 huge max in my opinion but you know that's something that we'll see a lot you know like these ones look at these ones like two it's two different ones but it's just the mouse position that is a slightly different so really it's not needed i would i would take the second one out because it's a weird mouth like the tongue is a bit weird you know you, you could do a lot of cleaning in, in this. And we'll see this repeatedly in different uh, different settings. Visuals, then you have visuals with brightness, saturation, contrast, and sharpness. So it, it's perfectly made here, no problem. You just have your brightness thing, your saturation works well. Nothing to say here, keep it that way, it's perfect. Next, depth of field. So depth of field is really important nowadays in, in video games. In this one, like the settings are okay-ish, but it, it really doesn't look good. So let's let's try to showcase this. Uh, let me find something in the background. You have distance and intensity, and you have then focus lock or active. First thing is a bit weird. Active is the 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 last setting on this tab so you you want to activate it's actually to activate the depth of field if you want to activate it you need to go down first and then go back up to the distance and different settings it doesn't make sense you want to have the activate button uh, at the top of the tab so you activate it and then you have it um distance i mean it does what it says and intensity, uh, yeah, intensity. 
Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it works pretty okay. Like if you go on the right, it will be stronger and on the left, it will be disappearing. The quality of it is bad, but it's an old game. Uh, maybe the this engine was not, you know, I don't know at the time if it was super great or not. Uh, definitely it can be improved. I don't know wh what they will use uh, as an engine for uh, Wonder Woman, but if it's uh, Unreal, it, it's you can have better thing. I mean, it's, it's okay. It's not even terrible, but uh, yeah, whatever. So the distance thing to 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 make the depth of field uh, settings better it i would ad advise to check my older videos on on different photo modes because we always talk about this but having a setting for the far blurness and the near blurness is great because we are in photo mode it's not real camera so you can play with both differently in my opinion some people don't like this some people have prefer to have this like a real uh, focus depth of field thing on, on a real camera. I don't think it's needed because we are in virtual world so we want more creativity. Uh, so if you go that road you have to have separated uh, settings for far and near blur and you can move them differently so you can widen or uh, shorten your, your depth of field which is the, the the sharp area if you will you know what hire me and i will explain this uh, more in depth you have the focus lock thing so if you focus lock i don't know where it focuses it locks the well i'm confused right now because i thought i i understood before but now i i don't oh, wait i thought it was just locking the the setting you decided wait so if i put my distance at 0 0.2 and i focus clock oh no it it goes back to 2.5 meters okay i don't really know why it does this so anyway that that's weird maybe if you want an autofocus thing um there is a better way to to do this mm. yeah okay whatever I mean, apart from this, it's obviously very needed to have a depth of field setting. So yeah, let's go to vignette. So vignette is a full tab. I think it's not needed to have one tab for vignette. You can put this in with different settings, uh, like um, even the brightness contrast settings, or maybe the grain, uh, the, the, the chromatic aberration, if you want to put some. So yeah size fall off and opacity and then active so again you have to go down to activate it before and then go back up it's it's a bit weird i mean you can you can just scroll down and it goes back up uh you know once you're on active you you press down and it goes up but still it's weird to have to go the, all the way down first so the size of it uh it's weird because the if you go on the right, so the stronger the size goes, it actually makes the, the, the vignette disappear because it's it's widened. So I, I get the, the thinking process here, but it's a bit counterintuitive. Um, I mean, compared to what's done nowadays in photo modes. So I would do the opposite, like size, because the size of the vignette itself is bigger meaning that there are there is more black on the screen but yeah so i would do the opposite but whatever then you have the fall off so it's the the strength of it again uh, i would do the opposite on the setting but but it's nice to have something that goes solid opacity so you know that's the the usual interesting to see that if you reset the 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 tab with R3, it doesn't reset the active, it stays active. It was inactive by default, right? So you activate it, you change your settings, and then you reset the tab, it still is active. So that's that's actually cool. It's actually interesting. Um, okay, vignette filter. Okay, so let's see this. <laughs> filter, you have just one line for now, and then you have one out of 
59. So again, same problem as before. It's too, too many. Uh, it really reminds me Mortal Shell when we started to add filters. They just added something like some settings from Unreal Engine for the, the LUT, you know, the LUT thing. And they just activated it and it created some sort of 200 uh, filters. And my job was to, to narrow down this list to... I decided to go for 11 filters. I think it was... I, I took a bit of um, an average amount of filters I, I could see in other photo modes at that time. So I think it was... I, I kept 11 or 12 or 13 max. Uh, filters and to decide which one I would keep I tested them all in different areas of the game with different lighting and stuff like this so it was a long work to do and I definitely think it's needed here as well so you have uh, you know the classic filters desaturate contrast light contrast dark it's not needed to have both you you, you just go for contrast light wait and then you change the 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 contrast setting in the where was it visual you know and you you can you can play and and you know for me filters are always a base to to help someone have a trigger an id like okay with this look it would be nice but still you need to to play with other settings to refine your your shot so Anyways, some of them are really cool, by the way. So it just need cleaning and just narrow the list down to 20 max, in my opinion. And then you have the intensity slider, which is cool to have. Always needed when you have filters, have intensity as well. And then you have active. It doesn't make sense to have this one here because, I mean, if you de- I mean, I guess if you are in the middle of the list and you don't want to go back to none you just deactivate it yeah, i guess options goes back to default and defaults means just the intensity slider default so if you move the intensity down for instance and you press options for going back to default it just goes back to intensity up it doesn't change the 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 filter you selected so that's weird i take it that it was just a setting for different tabs and they kept it with this one but it doesn't really make sense to have it and then what's the difference then with reset button let's see if you go down the intensity and you reset oh, okay so reset will okay reset will reset the the filter so you go back to none and and uh, intent and default will reset just the intensity okay well makes more sense but it's a bit over complicated for just one slider that you can just put super quick to to the the situation you want so yeah as much as i said before that you want to have a button to reset just one setting oh so keep this for every tab then like if you want to reset just the well it doesn't work right let me i didn't try this so you want to move only the brightness thing no it doesn't you press you press option button and it doesn't reset just this setting so you know that would be a good thing anyways um okay let me go back to filters reset this so again too many filters just narrow down to a list of essentials. Uh, it's my advice. Then you have stylize. Stylize is um, interesting because you have uh, different types of effects. Uh, we can see this in, in Hellblade 2, for instance, as well, or even Hellblade, the first one. So you have uh, some cool stuff that will ask you a lot of um, testings. So you see here for instance you have silhouette it's a cool feature but then you have a lot of different tints so you could just have one and then change the the color 
we have this on another setting we'll see in a minute so you know you don't really need four different ones uh here in my opinion so again 55 56 uh different stylized th those are filters basically so you have some more interesting ones like this but nowadays in modern photo mode it would be all in the filter tab i guess so again a lot different ones not not very <laughs> essential ones um but yeah oh yeah those ones were funny like it, it replicates the andy warhol um you know marilyn pop art stuff but it's it's fun but it's really not super important for virtual photographers you you won't really see a lot of people using this so i guess you can spare it texture then you have textures so again textures would completely fit in uh in the same tab as the filters and frame and stuff like this so you have you know different textures some are interesting some are really not useful in my opinion but whatever it's just 11 okay, look this one like no one will really use this to make a cool shot uh, yeah i mean to make a joke or a fun thing but once like it's really not that important frame and then you go to frame uh, so that's the ba basic one you have some interesting ones i like it but look at how many there are 73 guys that's crazy look at this like you have this one and this one that's the same just the color is a bit different so yeah again make the possibility to change the color on the same setting and that will be easier so anyways uh too many 73 it's it's a bit exaggerated then you have backdrop backdrop is very interesting then you have just three ones so it's three backdrops so that's cool so none is one fade is two and flat is three so it's a background you know solid background or you can use this one as a fog thing if you want so you can change the color which is perfect so that's why i said earlier that you could use this for other settings also you can change the saturation of it you can change the value so it's it's actually the the brightness and you can change the opacity so it's really cool really helps you have a uh, full control on this backdrop and for the fade one you will also have the distance and the fall off so distance obviously will be this like how far it goes and the fall off is the how solid is the transition and you have the uh, you have the flat one so flat one you cannot move the you cannot change the distance of it it will be automatically set completely around your character so it's really just a, a, a green screen oh okay you can see back there that some guys are still showing okay okay it takes all the all the characters actually so you would have to go back to where was it character tab to hide enemies if you want a full you know green screen the very interesting thing here is that it's way better implemented than the spider-man one uh, in spider-man 2 recently they have this uh it's terrible like the the it really doesn't look that good on on recent games here the the, the cutout is really clean on the hair i i really like it. it it i think it's great to have this tab and it it operates really well so i would definitely hope that they they keep it in their next game we're almost there guys you have the logo thing like these ones um 
nothing really interesting to say here just the fact that you can change their position but only like you can place them wherever you want on the screen which is really cool uh you can change the size of it with the scale thing again i would i would like to have it go full screen if possible like the maximum size should be bigger uh, but you cannot turn them and you cannot rotate it and that's annoying because if you want to take a, a shot you cannot rotate it the, the 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 logo so it's useless for this type of shot so it's a bit of a shame but yeah other than that no problem here and finally last tab is the sticker one so you know logo one is super small you have just just one setting here so you should merge logo and stickers in one tab now sticker is it's a bit silly again you you have this 93 stickers and let me just showcase a couple of them so again you can change the position you can attach one and then put another one so that that's cool the way it works is cool the problem is 93 stickers and and then you have the rotation for this so why not on the logo right it, it doesn't really make sense to have it here but not on the logo and again if you want to go back to the default one it, it's super complicated you can also remove one uh so that's cool now let let me show you some of those stickers so you have a lot of silly logos and again as i said earlier it the, the opportunity to use them or to see them used just you know it there's i mean yeah it's funny okay you can make a beard i guess but it's not needed it's not needed so again i i would advise to just uh lower the the the, the amount of them uh, but, you know, on the setting side, it's really cool. You can uh, play with the opacity. You can play with the, the color, the size of it. It's cool. Okay, there you go. So, yeah, why not? You can have 15 of them. Just a bit too, too, too many. All right. So, that's it. That's the last tab, actually. So, you know very very interesting photo mode uh, actually with a lot of strengths like the camera range is insane and absolutely needed so that's perfect the camera movement type is perfect um, all the settings here are needed the amount of options is a bit too much uh, in my opinion for filters and stickers and things like that the way the ui is organized could be much much enhanced but overall, you know, uh, like changing a bit uh, on the grid and things like that, it, it, it's an easy photo mode to enhance. But I wish most big games nowadays would have this type of photo mode, much less shy than the photo modes that we have nowadays. Now, you know that Unreal Engine 5 has a, a blueprint photo mode now that we see more and more in in recent games i really really hope monolith will not go on this road and they will use their own photo mode as a model and they will just enhance it and see what what is really needed and what's not because yeah that that's that would be great to have uh, such a tool in a big production very very long video today probably but uh really i'm really glad forget sudo uh, got me to check this photo mode if you have guys if you have a, a favorite photo mode that you want me to check that i didn't cover on the channel because for the overviews i just go with the the, the newest one but yeah uh, hit me up and if i get if i have the game or if there is a demo of it uh, i will I will review it and I will see uh, what I missed because now that I played this demo for this video I, I really want to go back in these games because they are amazing so yeah check it out if you if you don't know them 
And uh, for the rest, you know, you know the drill. Uh, find me on X, uh, visit my website for all the info, including my services as photomod consultant. Thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you want. I have a lot more content on virtual photography, shorter videos as well. Um, we have long live session. We have interviews of photographers. We have shout outs of people I love. We have a lot of different content, content um, around virtual photography. So give me a thumb up, um, put a comment, subscribe to the channel to support. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep snapping. Bye.